Hello everyone, hope you're doing okay. Um, I said a little while ago that I was going to have a look at sculpting some heads because I had been practicing doing that and I finally got round to um, filming a video showing you how to sculpt said heads. Um, uh, now I've done this uh, as a cutaway, I've already filmed it and taken a look at it and uh, I have to apologise that um, there are some technical issues, um, maybe the focus isn't totally right all the time, um, the sound is a bit fuzzy because I was leaning in close over the camera and, and it was a bit too hot for the microphone, um, but see how you get on. <laughs> Let me know if you've got any uh, any advice, any tips for, for doing better. Um, and I hope this is helpful. There are not a lot of uh, head sculpting tutorials out there. And I'm not claiming to be a genius sculptor by any stretch of the imagination. This is just uh, a, a sequence of doing things that I have found um, helpful and hopefully it's a useful tool for you to have in your toolbox. So see what you think. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through um, the process <coughs> in pencil first um, so that I can easier show you uh, what it is that I'm going to do here. So let's start off with a, a third angle orthographic drawing uh, of our head. Very accurate, of course. Through all of this, bear with me, please, because I am working over the top of uh, a camera um, and I'm trying to draw using the screen rather than my eyes. So uh, I'm not still very, um, not very accustomed to this. So let's, let's see how this goes. But essentially, Here's the side view of our head, and it is two ovals of about the same size, overlapping like that, squared off at the back, and your neck is going to come down in here. Now, that means that that oval there from the front view, same size as that. And from the top view, plan view, same size as that oval there. So essentially this is four ovals of the same size. Top view, side view, front view. And the first thing we're gonna do is mark halfway down the head where the eye level is and then make two marks a third apart down that bottom side of the face that gives us the lines for our nose and our mouth to sit on now lines that I'm roughing in here I'm going to rough in in red lines that will be final lines I'll try and put in uh, in pen so that you can see them a bit more clearly. The first thing that I'm going to do is looking from the side here I'm going to push back to about halfway through where that oval would sit. I'm going to push back a line in the putty so this now steps in. Then I'm going to slope from that point down to where the nose comes. So on the front here that will be pushed back flat, that area there, and then that will be sloping down to here. And it's important to keep looking um, in these three dimensions because uh, when you're used to looking at a face, you're used to looking at it front on most of the time. So that's how you'll tend to read it. But the, the tendency is if you, you if you don't keep looking at it from the side and from the top as well, you'll end up with something that's very flat. Um, and it looks uh, it looks like an egg with some features drawn on it rather than a face. So if we do that here, essentially what we've done is push the top half back there and then this is now sloping down towards um, the line of the nose there. Okay, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is to um, square off the cheeks. So this at this point, the chin here, your chin bone, um, squares off up to the cheek line there and that's going to mean that this area here is pushed flat up to that point there 
Okay, having done that, I'm going to put the eyes in. Now, because this is pushed flat, the eyes will be pretty much in a line. They won't be curving around. So they'll be here and here rather than curving around. And that's actually, humans have very forward facing eyes. So that's, uh, that's totally fine. Um, a lot of animals will have them on the sides of their heads, but you don't want human eyes wrapping around. Human eyes are very much in a line facing forwards. They wrap a little bit, but not very much. Um, so that will give us eyes here. Um, and bear in mind that you have a thickness to the nose here. So the um, best way to do this is to divide this into three. Okay, and you want your eyes to come almost touching, almost touching that outer edge, not quite. There. Now, notice what I'm doing here is going below that line. I actually haven't gone below that line here, but the eyes should sit level on that on that middle line. And um, if you go a bit above that line, then they'll be floating too high in the head. But we'll we'll look at that when we actually come to do the um, to do the sculpt. So got the eyes in there. Um, then I'm going to use a knife and I'm going to push in the mouth here and pull up slightly to give the upper lip and this should be pointing towards this corner which is where the mandible the jawbone comes in so there should be a direct line going that way um, with the angle of the lower mouth so that gives us a little slit there then i'm going to push in here and here to give the divides where the cheekbones meet the this is called the mouth block um, the area that the the protrusion of the mouth sits in so that will push some lines in here and here and then i'm going to push into the corners of the mouth which will push that back then i'm going to push a lower lip in here and then i'm going to push that chin out and that will give us some definite features that will give us eyes they're not moving that will give us cheekbones, upper lip, lower lip, chin, and then we'll put the, the mandible, the lower, um, the jawline in. So eyes, cheekbones, upper lip, lower lip, no cheek and chin will all be pretty much <clears throat> in place. And then I'm going to wait for it to completely dry. Now at this point it looks all sort of squished backwards and weird and alien-like. But once this is dry, I'm then going to put a blob um, of putty on the front for the nose, which comes in here and intersects just above the eye level there. So that's on this third of the way up line here intersects onto the jawbone and then I'm going to push a brow line on here which is going to go back to that point so it's going to start out leading ahead of the eyes here and go slope back to this point and um, that we push the putty back to that will give us the top back of the head leading to the neck and then put the ears on in place there so that hopefully um, should show you the process that I'm going to go through here is um, a head that I did that on. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. And I'm going to start with this. So this is just a bit of bent wire. Um, just the top bent over very gently so that this doesn't then sort of spin when you press the putty on with an oval of putty pushed in place um, and that oval is essentially this back section here so I'm, I'm going to push a similar lump of putty onto the front there um, with the jaw line a little bit lower now the size of these um, 
balls is quite important. So we've got a 28 millimeter figure. Okay, there we go. Now, um, some um, models obviously will be 32, 35 and bigger. Um, some models will be 25. This is a 28 mil. Um, figure, which is, is what I try and work to because I try and match my stuff in with old school um, miniatures that are about true 28. So, um, okay, there's my 28 mil. Um, if this was a full size person, um, anatomically, your head occupies between a seventh and an eighth um, of that size. But what a lot of people have found because uh, people have gone into 3D sculpting with um, accurate sized anatomy or some sculptors from um, who make big miniature or big models have have started working in miniatures um, and they do true size heads and what you find is that they they look very very small they're much smaller than we used to um, because typically um, the head of a, a 28 millimeter figure historically uh, has been uh, about a fifth of the size uh, of the body. It's exaggerated because you want to be able to see the features, but you don't want to end up with a big um, with a big model. So you'll find that if you were to scale up classic miniatures, um, the heads and the hands would be disproportionately large. Um, so obviously a fifth of 25 mil would be five millimeters. A fifth of three millimeters, or oh, I've got to do my maths here. Basically, we're aiming for a six mil. That's what I'm going to do. We're aiming for a six mil head, okay? Uh, and then the rest of the body is divided pretty much evenly. So, yeah, that's where your shoulders come. That um, allows for the neck though. So your head is probably only going to be about five mil. You want to allow space for that. So that's what we've started off with, a 5 mil ball of putty on the end uh, of there. Now, this is a, um, a ball of green putty. Um, I'm going to be sculpting in Procreate, which is a grey putty. That's um, the putty that I've done this head in. And the reason that I'm using Procreate for this um, is so that you can see it better against this background. Um, the grey shows up better under the lights, but also um, so that you can see, if I have a look at that, so that you can see the grey as I'm applying it against the green. So you can see what's already on there and solid um, and what I'm adding fresh um, at each stage. Now, as I say, bear with me, I have not done this <laughs> before, so I will try and keep this in focus. I will try and work around the camera, but um, I'm working quite quickly and I'm working um, in... Um, difficult circumstances around this camera that's just in front of me here. So uh, this may not be my best head ever, but I'm going to do it live. I'm going to do it in one take uh, and we will see what it turns out. And hopefully um, the the principles here will will translate well. So I'm just going to mix up the putty uh, I'll be back in a second. OK, I'm back. So um, let's walk through what I'm using here. This is a straightforward cork, bottom of a champagne cork, wine cork with a bit of um, plastic card with some holes punched in it. And this makes quite a good stand for holding the head here. Um, I'm actually not going to use this uh, while I'm sculpting because I want to be able to sort of spin this and flex this and move it around more freely. Um, but I'm going to hold it here so that I can put my head in it um, if I need to. When I've finished, I can sit in there to, to cure. Um, I've got my putty. This is just Procreate. Um, the same principles will apply with green stuff. Green stuff is a little more sticky, it's a little more um, uh, plastic than, um, than Procreate. So if you are using green stuff, um, especially if it's very fresh green stuff and it's very warm like it is today, let it sit for half an hour um, until it's not sticking to your fingers. You can sort of roll it around your fingers and you're not getting bits of um, putty coming off on your fingertips. And then it will be uh, in a usable state. You don't want to use it while it's really, really sticky and stretchy because um, you won't be able to work it properly. Uh, I have my chisel ended black firm clay shaper. Oh, that's not the chisel ended one. This is the chisel ended one. There you go. Chisel ended black firm 
clay shaper there. That's what I'm going to be using for doing most of the shaping. I have got a round uh, ended one, which I will use for doing the occasional bits, but probably not, uh, not very much uh, for this one. I have got a scalpel, uh, and this is a, a fine um, blade here. I, I prefer these curved blades for sculpting because it gives you that nice point for getting in, but also you can rock it to get longer um, cuts if you need to, and that fine bit means that you're not struggling to keep the rest of the blade away from uh, your model, so that's what I go for. Um, this tool, uh, this is, was a gift from the lovely Mr. Kev White. Uh, when I did his sculpting um, class, he did made one of these tools for us all, which is very nice. This is a, essentially a pencil with a pin in the end of it. And the pencil is nice and chunky, and it's one of these three-sided, so it's a very ergonomic grip. It's very nice to hold on to. Um, I find, though, this length of pin coming out the end here, um, it can get quite a lot of pressure on it, and it's a bit bendable. Um, so I'm actually not going to use this. I just thought I would show you um, this tool because it's very, very helpful. And obviously, Kev White is a total pro. Um, and if this is what he uses, then it's good enough for me. But this is not what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using this tool, which I have made, which is a, a needle shoved into the end of a piece of um, copper tube. Um, and the needle here has, uh, it's quite a fine needle, but needles are a lot stronger, a lot less prone to bending and snapping than pins. So this has got a lot more um, force to it. This isn't going to bend. Not that I'm going to be applying that much force, but um, but that's anyway, that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and one of these ball ended tools, um, which we won't use just yet, but we'll use um, towards the end. So let's start off. So I've got my little back of the head here. Um, so this is going to be uh, the neck, and then this is where the back of the head comes out. So what I want to put on is the front of the head where the face is. And I want approximately the same amount of putty as I have on the back there. Rolled into a slightly elongated oval and pushed onto the front so that this piece, which is where the chin is going to come, is slightly below where the neck joins this back piece here. Then I'm going to work this in around the sides. Yeah, this is really tricky around a, <laughs> working around a camera. Oh well, we'll see how it goes. And I'm trying to get a nice symmetrical oval shape like we've got here. Well, obviously, that's not that symmetrical, but um, the faces are pretty symmetrical. So you do want to try and get that as much as possible. And then I'm just going to square off the chin a little bit. Okay. Then with my scalpel, I'm going to mark halfway down the head there. And that's where my eyes are going to sit. And then a third down and a third down. And that's where my nose and my lips are going to sit. Just light indents at this point. I just want to reference those points for later on. And then I'm coming up to that halfway line and I'm pushing backwards quite forcefully, quite hard, flattening off that top side of the head and then blending it sideways into the back of the cranium there. Okay, pushing that in. 
pushing that in sideways and then sloping from that point down to the third line which is where the bottom of the nose is going to come in so just gently slope that bit then I'm going to push from the chin line up into the cheeks to square those off a bit and come back to the chin square that up just drop a little bit around the side there okay and then using uh, the pin here I'm going to put in four dots where the corners of my eyes are. So I'm going to go right on the edge there, right on the edge there, and make sure you leave enough space for the nose. Okay, so it's four dots in there. Now, when you're using this pin, uh, moisten it a little bit. Either have a sponge with a little bit of um, water on it, um, or don't tell anyone, but I lick mm. lick the end of it, which is not very hygienic. I prefer that you, you use a sponge, but that's what I do anyway. Um, that just stops the putty from sticking to it. And what I'm going to do is just draw the upper eyelids. So I'm going to start here. And just draw in where the upper eyelids sit. Okay. And then the same with the lower eyelids. With the lower eyelids, be very careful to only use the very, very tip, the very tip of the pin. And then just back into the corner of the eyes, just press in again with the pin just to make those eyes nice and round looking in there. Then I'm going to get my scalpel. Again, moisten the tip of it. Don't lick the end of a scalpel. Bad, bad. Don't lick the end of a scalpel. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Um, and I'm going to push in where this second third line is and pull up slightly to give my utter upper lip okay and it's best to do this in one if you can and I'll just smooth this upper area again okay so that's my upper lip in there um, the upper lip should come to halfway across each eye so if we're looking here your upper lip should be coming halfway across each eye there and once that's in place then you can just tap in either side of the mouth box there to give the lines that are demarking where your cheeks go. Then I'm going to pop in with a pin the sides of the mouth, just pushing in the sides of the mouth and that pushes back the putty to either side and I'm just going to sort of smooth that down to sharpen the chin line up a bit more. Okay, then with my um, putty um, chisel tip, um, sorry, silicon chisel tip, I'm going to push in diagonally from one corner of the mouth to the center, pushing up. And then the same the other side, pushing up. 
and that will give the lower lip and then I'm going to pull down and pull back from uh, where the jaw bend goes pull down and out to give me a stronger chin line there so at this point what you have essentially is a a, a very sort of baby faced looking um, face it looks a bit weird looks a bit alien because it doesn't have the nose and it doesn't have the forehead in it um, but also all of these features like the cheeks um, and the bits either side of the eyes and the chin line they're all very rounded they're all very sort of chubby looking um, so to this point all figures are pretty much the same but now that you've got that basic anatomy in um, this is where you can start changing it up and um, adding the character to your face so you might want to use a round tool here um, to press in the cheeks, just sort of rolling up either side there to give more pronounced cheekbones, take some of the, the chubbiness out of the sides of the, of the jawline here, roll down either side of the eyes to give that very pronounced um, bit of bone that runs from the eyes uh, to the to the ear here. Sometimes that's very pronounced. You can roll that in. If you want to add um, some expression to the mouth, you can get a pin in there and pull up at the corners, or pull down at the corners. Get into that mouth open it up if you want an open an open mouth um, but then remember to put in the features around it so if we've gone there for a downwards pointing open mouth that's going to be pulling back on the sides of the of the cheeks there which is essentially going to separate off that jaw as a separate piece And it might also impact the skin where it pulls here or over the cheek bones. They may be pulled a bit more tight and a bit more pronounced because of it. Once you've tweaked um, the features on the mouth, put this aside, stick it in a cork, put it somewhere really safe uh, and wait for it to dry. And here I've got one in true Blue Peter fashion, you can tell I was a child of the 90s. Uh, here's one I made earlier. So this one, um, I've gone for a, a sort of scowling, kind of grumpy face. But it's still missing the brow line and it's still missing uh, the nose. So the nose, very, very small bit of putty. Chucking it around. Very small piece of putty, easy to overdo this. So this is why I put this on first, and then if it's too big, um, I can chop it off above the brow line. So pop that into position on the front of the face there. And then it will merge into the face just above the line of the eyes. So just oops, try and keep the bottom piece in place. Take the top piece off. Then I'm going to start blending this in. Let's get rid of that cork. Start blending that in, trying to keep it central, trying not to overlap the nose into the eyes. And this is another feature where obviously a lot of your character will be um, dictated by the shape of the nose. Men have much bigger noses than women typically. Women have much straighter noses than men typically. But there's so much variation, so much of your character will come from the shape of the nose there. So take that down to the the 
thirds line that you put in before, halfway between the eyes and the top lip. Square that off a bit. This person's got quite a large pointy nose. And then using the pin, you can pop in the nostrils on either side. Taking care to watch where they go, the, no the nostrils sort of sit over the top of this lower chin line here, so if uh, cheek line here, so if the cheeks are coming in here, the nose kind of protrudes a little bit over the top, <coughs> uh, over the top of those cheeks there. Then another long strip of putty. Oops. Press that onto the forehead. Smooth it back at the sides there. Smooth it onto the top. Now I said I was going <coughs> to um, uh, mention what happened if your eyes were too high up. This is a very uh, common thing to put the eyes too high up. Firstly, you can expand the forehead at this point. So you can raise the top of the head. Just make sure that you're not raising it so big that it becomes higher than the, uh, than the five mil that you need it to be. So you can raise it at this point. But the other thing is that sometimes it's quite good to leave the forehead lower than it would normally be at this point because you're going to want to put hair on this afterwards and adding that as a bulky mass on the top rather than trying to do it as a thin layer and score the hairs in um, is usually easier. And then I'm just rolling just from that point at the top with a flat and just rolling that down to meet the top of the nose there. And then we've got these very pointy, very angry eyebrows. So let's roll those down as well. But this is where you can put the rest of the emotion into your character. Um, and if you check out Tom Mason's um, sculpting tutorials, he will show you how to manipulate this brow line um, to give you a sad expression, an angry expression, a happy expression, just with a few tiny tweaks uh, in where this brow line is. So that, that this is actually a very, very important stage, putting this on. Um, and then we'll put the ears on. So where this jawline comes up here uh, and meets the line with the eyes, the ears sit level with the top of the eyes down to uh, the bottom of the nose around there and just make sure that they stick out on the sides. If we have a look at this one that I did earlier, this guy's got slightly accentuated ears. They're slightly larger perhaps than they should be. Um, but you can see from the front, they stick out on either, on either side. Um, so I hope that was uh, useful for you. Uh, next week will be uh, the sixth month anniversary of doing these weekly um, videos. Uh, so I'm going to do a, uh, a painter's progress report for you so you can see all the things uh, that I've been painting in the last uh, six months. And obviously, um, a considerable amount of those six months has been lockdown. Um, so probably a lot more painted than there would otherwise have been. Um, and we'll do a little bit of uh, an overview of the, the journey that that's been as well. So I hope you join us for the next week's video. Take care.